call the meeting, uh, call to order the special meeting of the City of Lake Mills City Council for October 4th, 2016. Please rise to the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. Starr? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Here. Mr. Foster? Here. Mr. Fritch? Here. And Mr. Perkovich and Mr. Knibble previously informed staff that they'd be unavailable for tonight's meeting. Okay, looks like we're going to need a motion to move into <coughs> closed session. Pursuant, pursuant to Wisconsin Statutes 19.85, Paragraph 1G, confirmed with legal counsel who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or is likely to be involved. Do I have a motion? So move. And a second? Second. Can I get a roll call the vote? Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Sharp? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Hey, we're in closed session. I guess we're going to meet in the all right, we have reconvened back into open session. Next order of business is the correction and or approval of the City Council <coughs> minutes of September 20th, 2016. We have a motion for approval. So move. Second. Second. I'd like to make a motion to table this for the next meeting because I think we we have nothing in the minutes that show the content of Mr. Herring's talk at the end of the meeting. And since that was an issue of great city concern, I would like the minutes to show what he said at that time and the fact that the city did cooperate with him and his wife, um, but I'd like that put in the minutes. Like a transcript of what he said? That would be perfect. Yeah, I, it, I don't, I'm not requesting a transcript, but a transcript would take care of it from my point of view. I just think, you know, there's nothing there to, to show that he, you know, did, well, what he did say, and I, I'm not gonna paraphrase it, but. So I, I, it's a motion to table so that she can make a change. Do we have a second? Second. Oh. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Scharr? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Thank you. And we move on to correspondence. I guess we'll start with uh, Rudy. I had nothing. And, uh, I had nothing either. Very light, uh, just some questions about political signs, but nothing that needed attention, more just being able to give answers. And it was by for me also. We will move on to questions and public comment. Can I get you to read that for me? Questions and public comment. The public is encouraged to address the council at this time regarding items on the agenda, unless the item is the subject of a public hearing. If your comments pertain to a public hearing, you are asked to hold your comments until the hearing. Public comment may also be made at this time on items that are not on the agenda if you have registered with the city clerk before the meeting has been called to order. The state's open meeting law discourages action by the council on items not listed on the agenda. Please keep your comments limited to three minutes and state your name and address when starting your comments and fill out the sign-in sheet provided. So public comment is open. So we'll close public comments and go on to the city manager's report. Steve? Point of order. Um, according to the agenda, we should be going into the capital budget at this time. Mm. Based on timing, yeah. Huh? Because it's six in the next meeting. You're in the next meeting, Rudy. Yeah, but R what Rudy's saying, what is, saying is that meeting is scheduled for 6.30 and it's almost 6.30. Yeah, but it's going to start late because we couldn't predict exactly what time. So as long as it's starting at that time or later, you're okay. We just didn't want to start the meeting earlier. Okay. 
Got you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for you. Okay, Steve. Well, the police r monthly report was in there for you. Um, and this is a municipality magazine. Uh, do you all get it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, there was the part that Jerry just chain read in there, or wrote in there. It is the most important part of the league's legislative lobbying effort begins right now. And he talked about all the issues that are very important to local leaders as far as lobbying our state legislators. And so I will turn to the... Municipal infrastructure repair. Diane and I attended a meeting last Thursday that's called Just Fix It, uh, Turn Off for Transportation. And it basically talks about all the issues related to Wisconsin's uh, roads and the need for funding that and asking your legislators to make sure that they pay additional attention to funding public inf uh, infrastructure, particularly roads. Um, it talks about railroad repairs, another piece of the, uh, the public infrastructure requirements. And they have resolutions in there for each one. Uh, then they have closed tax hole loops, causing more property tax burdens to shift from commercial to residential, which is what we just dealt with. And a lot of people call it dark stores. And then addressing the shortage of fire and EMS service providers. And so there are a couple of really important um, resolutions that you might want to look at and maybe see if you want to bring forward for us to pass and send to our local legislators. Other than that, that's all I have. Are there any questions? No. Is there anything yeah. you want to add about our meeting that we went to last week, Diane? Well, first of all, we didn't solve the problem. Um, it was the first of future meetings, um, we here in Lake Mills are able to make some road repairs because of our uh, financial status that we have that we can borrow. Um, but a lot of the cities and towns at the meeting aren't in that situation. They're really worse off than we are. But we, of course, aren't happy with it either. Um, and uh, it, it, it's just a case where the state is, doesn't want to increase their budget. And it's basically saying, too bad, guys. You know, you'd figure out what to do about it to the towns and the cities. And but they, they keep your levies capped at zero, so there's no opportunity to make any change. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. President, at this time, I'd like to make a motion for the council consideration that um, a letter be drafted to our state representatives addressing these issues, um, especially the dark stores and um, the, uh, the need for funding uh, for the infrastructure and uh, a letter be written and signed by the council and sent to our representatives. You probably would want to have that be an agenda item or or the other way of handling it would be Steve could on his own decide to draft a letter and send it to you for comments as to whether or not that would be something acceptable so that you're not waiting two weeks in order to make that decision. You wouldn't be deciding it, but Steve would be doing it. The, the league has actually produced a resolution that you, you could have on your next agenda. So at the end, if you say we want that on the next agenda, I could put that resolution on. Well, if it's that all work. the same to the council, I'd, yeah. I, I would like to do that. <laughs> now I have one other question. Did we get another letter from the state regarding South 89 timing? Please. Recently? No. Yeah, recently. No, no, nothing new. Okay. As you, their position is kind of like ours. They're submitting all their data to the governor's office. 
and Department of Administration. Um, and then from now until July, when their budget has to be completed, things come and go. So I'm imagining that we may hear things about our project off and on throughout the course of the next seven to eight months. Um, but we really won't know until that final budget is passed uh, sometime around the end of June because they have to have it, they're supposed to have it done by July 1st. Okay, thank you. Anything else? All right, we'll move on to the acceptance of the minutes of the Joint Rock Lake Committee dated August 2nd, 2016, and the Plan Commission dated August 30th, 2016. Both of those will go on record as written. And we'll move into council business. Um, we have one board and committee appointment. Is that made by you, Steve? No, nope, that's made, made by, by you. us. Yep, it's actually Steve's, but you're functioning as Steve tonight, so you get to do it. Okay, so based, based on what I'm seeing here and what I've read, it looks like we're going to appoint Blaze uh, Knipple for another year as the city council student representative. So moved. Do we need to, or is that just Second, just a motion of acceptance. Okay, let's, I'm asking for a motion of acceptance. Get that from Diane, a second? Second. And let's take a vote. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Aye. Oh, that was Mr. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Mr. Scharr? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Yes. Mr. Foster? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. <coughs> next item uh, discussion decision on bid award contract for 2016 Wallace Park Concession Building. And can we get that? Motion read 161011. City Council motion 16 10 1 1, authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement for the construction of Wallace Park Concessions Building. Be it moved by the City Council of the City of Lake Mills, Wisconsin, as follows Section 1 that the low bid received from McGill Construction Company, Inc. for contract 4 2016 Wallace Park Concessions Building construction in the amount of 145000 as shown in the attached documents. And section two, that the city council has reviewed the bid received from McGill Construction Company, Inc. for their contract 4 2016 Wallace Park Concessions Building Construction in the amount of 145000 And section three, that upon the council accepting the base bid, the city manager is directed to execute the agreement with Lake Mills Area School District and then is authorized to sign all agreements to take such actions as necessary to implement said bid. The city council is hereby approved a contract with McGill Construction Company, Inc. For contract 4 2016 Wallace Park Concessions Building Construction in the amount of $145,000. Hey, do we have a motion for approval of motion 161011? So moved. Second? I'll second it. Discussion. Have we had any experience with this contractor? They built the light and water building. They just remodeled the Department of Public Works. And so, yeah, they've, right. they've been a good contractor. Uh, <clears throat> the anticipated total cost is $210,000. We were thinking about $155,000 for the bid. So $145,000 is good. Uh, we wanted to keep it moving because we want to see it much construction completed before the winter starts as possible. Where is it going to go? Wallace Park. Well, where in Wallace Park? It's uh, between the Big Diamond and the Four Little Diamonds, just off the east edge, a little bit south of the parking lot and the uh, play area there. Yeah. And it, it will have it will have water. It will have bathrooms and, and be fully functional. And they can buy hot dogs and stuff like that there? Yeah, the um, Recreation Department will run the concession stand. And um, part of the construction, the school district has put up $75,000. And uh, the Lions Club, which is represented by Ed Heim Street here tonight, uh, is doing a lot of volunteer labor on the project. 
I have a question. I'm a little puzzled by the wording, the apparent low bidder. Why is it listed that way? <laughs> you want to answer that, Jason? <laughs> <clears throat> they go through and they do and they have to do analysis on the bid to make sure that even though the initial bid they look like they might be the low bidder if you go through and do the line item by line item analysis they might not be for some reason and so we always do an apparent low bidder and then we come back and and verify that yes this is the bidder um, that's the low bidder so will it be coming back to us too, or are you going to handle it? Uh, actually, they have done that now. Okay, so it's not the apparent low bidder; it is the low bidder. Well, your 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 engineer is never going to say the low bidder. That will be the city's job, and that's fine. So yes, it's the low bidder. Okay, got it. I'm making an assumption then. After that, all maintenance falls into the parks department realm. That's divided up between the city and the school. And that's part of a memorandum of understanding between the two. That's the school has and we've looked at and, and uh, had approved it similar to the one that we did for the ballparks when we did those. Am I to understand any extra money that's generated from this goes to the uh, rec department? Right, you mean from the concession stand? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Call for oh, yeah, one question. What's the expected life of the, this building? Well, generally we figure somewhere around 50 years, but I, I imagine it could go longer than that. Depends on what kind of maintenance it receives over the next several, you know, the next 25 to 30 years. And, and if there's any changes in the expectations of what's going on out at the parks and those types of things. <coughs> Long after we're gone. All right, if that's all, we'll call for a vote. Mr. Shar? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 4-0. And that moves us on to resolution 1640. Authorizing the 911 Joint Powers Agreement in Jefferson County Emergency Service. Can I get that right, please? Resolution 16 40, Joint Powers Agreement, County 911 Emergency System. Whereas Jefferson County and the municipalities located within the boundaries of Jefferson County have implemented an emergency 911 system for the purposes of providing emergency services to residents and visitors of these municipalities, including firefighting, law enforcement, ambulance, medical, and other emergency services. And whereas section 2.56.35 sub 9 sub a sub b wisconsin statutes joint powers agreement requires that in implementing a 911 system as has been done in jefferson county municipality shall annually enter into a joint powers agreement in which agreement shall be applicable on a daily basis and which shall provide that if an emergency services vehicle is dispatched in response to request through the jefferson county 911 system such vehicle shall render its service to the persons needing the services, regardless of whether the vehicle is operating outside the vehicle's normal jurisdictional boundaries. Therefore, in consideration of the mutual promises, agreements, and conditions contained herein, it is hereby jointly agreed between Jefferson County and the City of Lake Mills, Wisconsin, as follows. Number one, effective as of January 1, 2017, this agreement shall there, thereafter be applicable on a daily basis for one year. Two, that if an emergency service services vehicle operated by the municipality or operated by an agency with which the municipality contracts for that particular emergency services is dispatched in response to requests through the Jefferson County Emergency 911 system, such vehicle, whether owned and operated by the municipality or by the agency, shall render its services to the persons needing the services regardless of whether the vehicle is operating outside the vehicle's normal, jurisdictional, or is defined by contract boundaries. Three, that a copy of this agreement shall be filed with the State Department of Justice as required by Section 256.35 sub 9 sub c, Wisconsin Statutes. Thank you. A lot of reading. Uh, do we have a... So move. Okay, a second, please. Second. And discussion. <coughs> so this is just more or less upkeep. We've been doing this before. We've done this every year for 30 years. 
as long as the 911 county dispatch has been in and we were a part of it every year we have to pass this agreement to remain a part of the county's 911 dispatch and what would happen if we didn't we'd have to organize our own dispatch so we'd have to bring we'd have to hire a bunch of new people and bring in a bunch of equipment and we'd have to set up policies and procedures for how to do it okay thanks that, that was what we not to mention if we needed sure help nobody would come yeah that's, that's good. okay uh does anybody else have anything else on this let's call a vote mrs fritch aye mr foster aye mr fritch aye mr sharp aye motion passed four zero that moves us on to resolution 1641 uh except public improvements white pines estate condominiums can we get that right please resolution 16-41 acceptance of public improvements white pines estates condominiums whereas city council of the city of lake mills pursuant to the authority conferred by the statutes of the state of wisconsin has established certain standards and procedures for subdivisions within the corporate limits of the city of lake mills wisconsin and within one and one half mile thereof and whereas the developer of the condominium development has submitted certain documents for review and approval by the city of Lake Mills, and whereas city manager, consultants, and city staff have reviewed the various documents submitted and have made recommendations concerning approval of said acceptance of public improvements, and whereas the city of Lake Mills staff and consulting engineer have therefore have they have heretofore inspected <coughs> public improvements constructed in the plat of White Pines Estates condominiums, and whereas developers and contractors of the White Pines Estates condominiums have constructed public improvements in accordance with specifications and standards established by the city of lake mills and now therefore be resolved this fourth day of october 2016 by the lake mill city council that the city of lake mills accepts all public public improvements as city-owned property located within white pines estates condominiums and be it further resolved the one-year guarantee period required in the developers agreement will begin as of the state i so move thank you a second second sure. Um, I just want to comment that uh, from the engineer's letter, it, uh, they've met all the criteria, and uh, so I don't think there's an issue. It's been in place so long that if it was going to fail, it would have. I mean, some of the issues have failed enough times, and we've made them fix it till now. It's pretty much fixed. Right. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Shaw? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. We'll move on to resolution 1642 of release letter of credit by Pines Estates, condominiums, so shown holdings, LLC. Could you read that, please? Resolution 16-42, release of letter of credit, White Pines Estates Condominiums, whereas the City Council of the City of Lake Mills, pursuant to the authority conferred by the statutes of the State of Wisconsin, has established certain standards and procedures for subdivisions within the corporate limits of the City of Lake Mills, Wisconsin, and within one and one-half mile thereof. Whereas the developer of the condominium development has submitted certain documents for review and approval by the City of Lake Mills, and whereas the City Manager, Consultants, and City, city Staff have reviewed the various documents submitted and have made recommendations concerning approval of said acceptance of public improvements and whereas city of lake mill staff and consulting engineer have heretofore inspected the public improvements constructed in the plat of white pines estates condominiums and whereas developers and contractors of the white pines estates condominiums have constructed public improvements in accordance with specifications and standards established by the city of lake mills and whereas the lake mill city council has accepted all public improvements as city-owned property located within white pines estates condominiums and now therefore be it resolved that the public improvements have been found to be acceptable upon inspection the city council agrees to release financial guarantee and the developer silverstone holdings llc may present this resolution to its financial institution to cause the financial guarantee to be released okay, do we have a motion of approval so moved and a second second and just any discussion on this one seeing none let's all the vote. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Scharr? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. All right, we're going to move on to resolution 1643, Sherwood Hills Northwest Flat approval. And could we get that read, please? 
Resolution 16-43, final plat approval, Short Hills North Subdivision, Phase 3. Whereas the City Council of the City of Lake Mills, pursuant to the authority conferred by the statutes of the State of Wisconsin, has established certain standards and procedures for subdivisions within the corporate limits of the City of Lake Mills, Wisconsin, and within one and one-half mile thereof. And whereas the developer of the proposed Short Hills North Subdivision has submitted certain documents for review and approval by the City of Lake Mills, and whereas an application for final plat and construction plan approval as required by the subdivision ordinance has been submitted, and whereas city manager, consultants, and staff have reviewed the various documents submitted and made recommendations concerning approval of said final plat and construction plans, and whereas the plan commission has reviewed the documents and determined that they are generally satisfactory and in the prescribed form. Be it therefore resolved this fourth day of October 2016 by the City Council of the City of Lake Mills that A, the City Council does hereby conditionally approve the Short Hills North Subdivision Phase 3 final plat and construction plans and does hereby authorize the Council President to sign the resolution of said final plat and construction plan approval subject to satisfaction of paragraphs 1 through 6 and submission of all supporting documentation in proper form including 1. The final plat will not be authorized and the site plan not deemed approved until the site plan meets all requirements of the ordinance. 2. Staff approval of the subdivision covenants and engineer's cost of estimate. 3. Submittal by the subdivider of a developer's agreement and a financial guarantee running to the city pursuant to municipal codes section 11-3-G and 11-5-A-2 to cover the sewer needs. The city staff and developer shall determine the required improvements. Four, payment for the division of costs is agreed to between the city and the developer for the extension sewer service to the subdivision. Five, the approval of the final plat and construction plans recommended above is further subject to review and comment, and in some cases, the approval of all applicable documents by state agencies, Jefferson County Highway Department, Jefferson County Board, and or Town of Lake Mills. Six, in the event the outside agency review is not completed, or all supporting documents are not submitted in final form within the time period agreed to between the developer and city, the approvals recommended herein shall be null and void. Do I have a motion for approval for Resolution 16.3? So moved. Second? So I have a question. Uh, sorry. Okay. That's okay. Um, I just wasn't quite sure with the legalese here um, but it's my understanding that we we want it to be contingent on the town of Lake Mills approval. Is that what it says in this thing? <laughs> no. Um, I recommend that there will be three amendments to the resolution. Oh, okay, good, because I didn't see that in here. Okay. Um, the first one would be instead of calling it Sherwood Hills North, uh, have that change to Sherwood Hills Northwest. That's correct, yeah. And uh, the second one would be the one that Ms. Fritch identified that the approval from the city should be contingent on Town of Lake Mills approval. It's likely the town might make some minor tweaks to the plat. They aren't going to affect the, the sanitary sewer or how the streets are going to be laid out, so they won't be anything that the city will be concerned with. But um, just to make it clear that once the town's done with it, it doesn't need to come back here anymore if you approve it tonight. And then the third recommendation for an amendment would be it discusses under one of the numbered paragraphs about covenants. Um, if this had been a, a subdivision plat in the city of Lake Mills, we would be looking at a number of things for their, how, um, their if they have an, an got a brain cramp, but if they had a, a group of people that live there um, who would then be looking at how the covenants are supposed to be uh, approved and, and upheld amongst the different neighbors within the association that would be created, those are concerns more of the township because they're not in the city. Uh, we don't have really any control over things like fences, outside antennas, um, uh, clotheslines, those are the kinds of things that often are covered in covenants. And so I don't believe that the city would really be concerned about it because once the sanitary sewer is constructed according to the construction <coughs> plans, that should be the end of it. So, And we wouldn't want to control what a homeowners association does or doesn't do under their covenants. Uh, that's just my opinion that that's kind of a 
boilerplate language from if this was a subdivision that was actually constructed in the city, but since it's in the town and we have limited authority, I would recommend taking that part of it out. You recommend the whole line or just the... Just about the covenants. The covenants. And the uh, representative from the developer is here, Attorney Jay Smith, in case he wants to address the council on the plat. Uh, thank you. I think uh, Vicki covered most of what I would have was going to say about the slight. We just wanted to make the council aware that the town may have a few small changes, but they shouldn't have any material impact on the city. I also wanted to ask one other question of what I heard there was about uh, county board approval. Uh, the county board did not need to approve this. It went through the planning and zoning committee because it was just a change to the prior approved plat. So, uh, and I have, if the city council needs it, a copy of the letter from the, from the planning and zoning with the county uh, contingent approval, uh, you know, contingent on the town's approval, city's approval, and so forth. So are you saying there would be four things instead of three? I think if I heard that correctly, yeah. if it says the county board yeah, approval, the county board. yeah, they, uh, pursuant to Rob Klotz at the county planning zoning, this didn't need to go to before their board. And we have the contingent approval letter from the planning and zoning committee. I have a question for staff. Um, are we on a timeline that this needs to go through tonight or can we look at this at the next meeting with these changes made and bring it back clean uh, I think that the developer would like it to occur tonight I think that's why they brought it in because we originally asked if we would wait until the town of White Mills had approved it and uh, they wanted it to go through tonight with a contingent that it be a, it make the town approval so that's why that was in there um, you have to go through the county Plan Commission, which is still a county board action. It, yeah, but we have that per contingent approval already. Right, from and their approval is contingent just like ours would be. Yes. You're obviously going to get several state agency approvals. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah. And, I, you know, I don't know if, but this says in, in some cases, it doesn't mean that they all have to approve it. It says in some cases they may or may not. So okay. uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty flexible in that we're going to look and make sure that you know, you've got your DNR approvals for the right. sanitary sewer. You've got your, you know, roadway permits and all that from the county or the town. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, your design is approved by them because just because the sanitary, you know, the town may decide they don't, they don't want the sanitary sewer under the street. That's not, you know, that may be something that's up to them. And, right. and you'd have to relocate it and get it reapproved by us. We'll come back and look at it. That shouldn't be a big deal, but I, I just wanted to make sure that that was out there. Well, we absolutely don't ex anticipate any changes that would have any, like I said, material impact on the city. Um, we've been in communication. We actually have a town plan commission meeting tonight at, uh, at 8 o'clock, and we're going to be hopefully getting their approvals uh, this month. But I guess the changes are so minor that we've, we, at least particularly for the city impact, that we would expect that or ask that they would get approved and expect that you could probably with staff review verify that none of those changes are of any material impact for our timeline um, we are asking for approval tonight and it, it you know would definitely prefer that yeah and I I don't have any problem with that I think contingent approval is okay as long the sanitary sewer construction is, is more of an engineering technical than anything else but I we have to know that there are issues that are out there that are potentially affecting it Probably the better way of wording it would be that it's a conditional approval based on staff review of any changes that were approved by the town to make sure that they don't have an impact on the city. And if that's the case, then it doesn't need to go any further. Um, so that, uh, would that be one of the four things? Or, yeah, or is, is that... Yeah, um, it, it does say under paragraph A that we're conditionally approving Sherwood Hills Northwest subdivision. Yeah. Um, but the condition would be that it's uh, contingent on Town of Lake Mills approval and staff review of the approvals to make sure that it doesn't materially affect the city. 
And uh, I, I also see that in s number three, uh, it refers to two sections in the municipal code. That's old language from before the municipal code was rewritten. I would just strike those section numbers out of there. It has to be in accordance with the municipal code, but we don't have to state the sections. I'd like to go ahead and make a motion to amend this uh, ordinance uh, with the said changes and um, yeah, and go ahead with the vote tonight. I'll second that. I've got one question. Uh, point of information, purely. What's meant on the plat map environmental setback? Well, <laughs> I probably could explain it. Perhaps uh, Corey Engineer maybe could explain it a little bit better. I'm not sure. He knows the map a lot better than me. <laughs> so. We need you to come to the mic. Sorry, I could, but. Jefferson County uh, Shoreland Zoning Ordinance requires a 70 foot, 75 foot setback from a, a wetland. So there's a, a wetland on the west side of the, yes. the plat. So that environmental line is 75 feet from the wetland, wetland line. And it meets that criteria. Correct. So then the designation, again for information, wetland boundary, that's the boundary of the marsh? More or less, yes. I think that was put in there, if I'm mistaken, I don't know, put in there because of some water retention issues, things like that. It was made larger. Is that what the case is? The, the wetland was required to be re-delineated. It was <coughs> originally delineated back in 2001. And because it's more than five years old, the DNR requires that to be re-delineated. So that was done. The line moved further back than what it was in 2001, so that pushed some things back. Can I ask how that's done, how that's arrived at that line, no. arrived at? Uh, we hired a, a sub-consultant, he's a, an assured delineator. He's trained by the DNR, he goes out, he digs holes, he looks at the vegetation, groundwater, soils, and then he determines where that line line is. And I can, I can tell you, Doug, that a, a wetland delineation is generally a book about this thick that has lots of pictures and lots of, of uh, documents that spell out why it is a wetland and why they set the boundary where it's at. So it's not arbitrary? <coughs> um, no, not really. It's pretty well, that's why they call it, um, he called it an insured wetlands delineator. That means that the DNR accepts their reports without question because they're good enough at it that they know how to do it. Good. All right. Let's vote on the amendment. Mr. Scharr? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Okay. Do we need a Thank new you. motion for? Resolution 1643 as amended. So moved. And a second. Second. And let's call the vote. Was any other discussion? No. All vote. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Sharp? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Okay. We're on to Ordinance 11. 71, the 2017 general fund budget first review. How do we, how do we normally do this? Do we use Just read the totals. Is that what we normally do? Just the totals. Yeah, let's, let's do it that way. Thank you. Ordinance 1171, 2017 general government budget and tax levy ordinance and ordinance appropriating the necessary funds for the operations of the general government and debt service funds of the city of Lake Mills, Wisconsin for the year 2017. The city council of the city of Lake Mills, Jefferson County, Wisconsin, deserting as follows. Section one, 
There is hereby appropriated out of the receipts of the City of Lake Mills for the year 2017, including monies received from the general property tax levy to the various purposes specified in the budget presented herewith for the purposes therein stated the following amounts. Summary of adapted general government budget for 2017. For total revenues, 2016 budget, 4,808,000. 2016 estimate, 4,808,000. 2017 proposed, 5,021,400. Percent change 4.4 percent total expenditures 2016 budget 4,808,000 2016 estimate 4,808,000 2017 proposed 5,021,400 percent change 4.4 percent 2017 debt service total expenses 2016 budget 1,201,700 2016 estimate 1,201,700, 2017 proposed 1,325,500, percent change 10.30%. Total revenues 2016 budget 1,201,700, 2016 estimate 1,201,700, 2017 proposed 1,325,500, percent change 10.30%. Amount I'm sorry, the grand total 2016 budget, 3,597,800. 2016 estimate, 3,597,800. 2017 proposed, 3,867,500. Percent change, 7.50%. Section 2, there is hereby levied a tax of 2,542,000 for all purposes and 1,325,500 for debt service on all taxable property within the City of Lake Mills as returned by the assessor in the year 2016 for the uses and purposes set forth in said budget. Section 3, the City Treasurer is hereby authorized and directed to spread this tax on the current tax roll of the City of Lake Mills. Section 4, this ordinance shall take effect and be enforced from and after its passage and publication. All right, do you have any discussion on that? If not, we'll move that on to the second reading. And that brings us to Ordinance 1172, the 2017 Capital Budget First Reading. Let's read that with the totals only also. Ordinance 1172, 2017 Capital Budget, an ordinance appropriating the necessary funds for the operation of the capital budget of the City of Lake Mills, Wisconsin for the year 2017. The City Council of the City of Lake Mills, Jefferson County, Wisconsin, does their name as follows. Section 1, there is hereby appropriated out of the receipts of the City of Lake Mills for the year 2017, including monies received from the general property tax levy to the various purposes specified in the capital budget presented herewith for the purposes therein stated the following amounts. 2017 Capital Budget Total Revenues, 2016 Budget, 1,771,000, 2016 estimate, 1,785,888, 2017 proposed, 2,746,400. Total expenditures, 2016 budget, 1,771,000, 2016 estimate, 1,785,888, 2017 proposed, 2,746,400. Section 2, there is hereby levied a tax of 30,900 for capital purposes on all taxable property within the City of Lake Mills as returned by the Assessor in the year 2016 for the uses and purposes set forth in said budget. Section 3, the City Treasurer is hereby authorized and directed to spread this tax on the current tax roll of the City of Lake Mills. Section 4, this ordinance shall take effect and be enforced from and after its passage and publication. All right, any discussion on that? Sure. We'll move that on to the second, second reading. That brings us to recommendations for future agendas, and we know about the, the one letter for the legislative letter. Is there anything else that anybody wants to bring up? I have a question. Um, <coughs> do we have the time to do a second reading at the next meeting and then a third at another, or do we have to, yes? No, we have the time. Yep, we okay. scheduled it and got all the public hearings taken care of to meet the requirement. Okay. And anything else on future agendas? If not, I think we have a motion to adjourn. We, no, we got the, we've got that. Um, right. We can Study adjourn session? And huh? we, can, we can open the other session afterwards. Okay. Yep. Did you so want to make that motion already? Or? Yep, so moved. Second. 
let's take a vote. Well, we don't have to for a journey, do we? No. Yeah. You get to do that all we're on your very own. We are adjourned then. Mm -hmm. Let's take five minutes and you get back.